Hello guys from Plant Reviews, today second video of the day and I will talk about the tall Darwin Tulip Avignon a single late tulip. Uh, as you can see the flower, sorry, the stems of this tulip are very long. It's a plant that can reach 60-65 centimeters tall and actually in my pot, I'm sorry that I have the net outside. Okay, I can go from here. Uh, you can see that from the rim, even in a pot, they actually grew all the way through to be about yeah 65 centimeters. So this is probably one of the few tulips that even in a pot reach full sides, reaches full sides. The um, leaves, as usual, are the uh, greenish, bluish leaves of uh, almost all tulips. And what really stands out for this variety is the absolutely gorgeous uh, warm color. Uh, it is uh, a bright orange with reddish hues and the flowers are really goblet shaped. Even in the sun I've never found this flower opening up completely uh, like saying uh, some of the other tulips that well are now quite spent anyway. Uh, the many um, shielder and the orange uh, king. Um, however, these uh, uh, maybe this is also the reason because it stands out. It really keeps this egg shaped, uh, egg shaped flower for longer than uh, any other of the varieties I have in the garden. And the color is incredible, very warm. Um, it's about. 10 centimeters tall. Due to that it doesn't open, it really stays about uh, six, seven centimeters in diameter. But if it would have been open, would have probably reached about 11 or 12 centimeters. The inner part of the flower is, uh, uh, yeah, as you can see, hopefully, is kind of uh, yellowish, greenish. Okay, guys, I'm trying to focus. Yeah, you can see. Yeah, it's a yellowish greenish with some darker areas. Yeah, six darker areas. The f um, it's pretty slightly fragrant, uh, almost the same fragrant of uh, all the other tulips. Okay, I think I ruined the flower, but anyway, <laughs> I still beautiful even if it's open a bit more. Anyway, I'll try to. Uh, pollinate it uh, afterwards. Uh, again I will pollinate uh, as usual by moving some of the pollens uh, of the anthers on the stigma. Uh, this uh, I will show you in an, in one of my uh, next videos. Uh, it's basically you move the uh, st stamens, the pollen from the stamens to the stigma. The stigma is the big uh, area in the center and well you know what actually I can show you on here I have a flower that is spent so you can actually see here on this flower we take out the petals and sepals okay so okay so in this flower that is already spent this is the male part and this is the female part so basically what i do is and this is still an avignon tulip so i take this part this is the female part the anthers with the pollen take it out and then you put the pollen on you rub this on the stigma of the flower precisely like this this mimics what an insect, a bee, would do because they, with their hair on the body, uh, obviously the pollen from the stigma uh, get into the uh, sorry, the pollen from the anthers gets on the body, on the bodily hair of the bees and or other insects, and then when they uh, go flower from flower, they basically leave the pollen on the stigma that usually is a kind of sticky surface. Unfortunately, some tulips are not fertile, some tulips are sterile and they will never develop seeds, some other are fertile and they will develop a, a, a seed pod. Um, and I actually, I can show you here uh, what happens, I will show you in this video as well. 
Uh, again, talking about the Avignon uh, tulip, uh, as uh, you can see, it's a very tall tulip and definitely I can recommend it uh, from uh, the mid and back of the border and uh, it's such an intense color that is really stand out in uh, every garden. So let's talk about um, fertile and sterile tulips. So basically, if the pollination has gone through, you will see this part, the stigma, uh, enlarging and become bigger and keep its color very green. Uh, the stigma becomes bigger and bigger. I have some species tulip I pollinated, that's the stuffy. You can see actually here how the female part of the flower stalk, the stigma, enlarged and this contains the seeds. However, and this is a species tulip, species tulip usually are fertile. It's very rare that you find the sterile species tulips. Um, however, some other tulip, especially artificial varieties, are different, some are sterile. Here I do have some, I don't miss the label, but I think I can find some here as well. Unfortunately, one of my favorite tulips turned up to be sterile, and that's the princeps. As you can see, in the princeps, the seed pot started developing, however, it's just drying up and wilting. You can't actually see anything and you can see the yellowish color. These, as you can see here, are sterile seed pod. They will turn up without any seeds. And see the difference between these ones that are wilting and drying away from these seed pods that are still very green and very and developing very well. This is the orange emperor. Uh, unfortunately, it's unpredictable and you can find information uh, on websites if sometimes if the tulips is sterile or not, but very rarely you will find this information. So you really have to experiment yourself. I'm very sorry to say that most of my favorite hybrid red hybrid tulips uh, turned up to be sterile. This is the princeps and another one that turned up to be sterile is the um, the red emperor as well. So I was very sorry. Ah, the red emperor is here and look here. This is the red emperor. Uh, now it's normal that uh, the plant is wilting because the red emperor is at the end of the of the uh, growing period. However, look at the difference of the of this seed pod. You can see how dry and how small it is. So yeah, this is the seed pod. Same for the seed pod here. And look how these seed pods are instead green. And you can see here some of the seed pods of the stuffy. Look how big they are, and you can actually see the this kind of tessellation. These are the seeds uh, developing anyway. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. So, tulip avignon definitely a great tulip for the border, and the. Um, Good luck with the pollination. I will try now to pollinate the other two Avignon tulip tulips before the blooming is finished. And uh, as I said, really you have to experiment yourself with the breeding tulips. Another um, another information I can tell you about breeding tulips is that as they are hybrids, there's a very it's very very unlikely that you will end up with offspring all similar to the parents probably you will end up with the plants of very different colors from each other and uh, from the parents as well even if they are from the same variety because uh, tulips uh, are so much hybridized that the amount of genes they have 
regulating the color is very mixed up. However, surely it's fun to create uh, new crosses and who knows, you can, you can uh, start selecting uh, your own variety that might be uh, very successful in the next few years. So I hope you enjoyed the video guys and uh, if you like uh, my videos uh, it would be great if you can please subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you don't like my videos please comment what you didn't, you didn't like. If you like my videos please comment <laughs> what did you like. And if you'd like to have some um, more videos about some uh, peculiar topics please let me know writing it in the comments. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Bye.